Hello, everyone. It's great to see so many people on our uh, purely mathematical and cryptographical talk. So I try to uh, rule out as many formulas as possible, but still many of them are left here. So this talk is, of course, intentionally scientific to show up that we are doing something serious. But uh, there will be also like important numbers will be on the very last slides. That's like this, the slide before last. So like number of constraints and this sort of stuff will be in the very end. So if you are just coming just for that, you can wait. <laughs> so this is a joint work uh, of uh, the company I'm involved with, uh, Everneem and ABDK Consulting, and uh, also our colleagues from uh, universities of Bristol and Graz, Arnab, Lorenzo, Christian, Sebastian, and Marcus. So this kind of uh, work that was conducted a bit independently and then later merged, and still it's kind of work in progress, so we even haven't invented the proper name for the hash function. So, uh, okay. So you probably remember what the hash function is, what properties should have. The good hash function should process arbitrary large input, well, up to some extent, but pretty like yeah, gigabytes should handle. It should be collision resistant, meaning that it should be difficult to find X and Y different so that uh, the hashes of them are identical. Well, as long as hash function uh, converts arbitrary large inputs to fixed size outputs, collisions are unavoidable, but they must be difficult to find. Perimage resistant means that given Y, it must be difficult to find uh, X so that H of X is Y. Well, hash functions, in Ethereum, uh, you may think of hash functions everywhere, of course, mainly uh, SHA-3. So SHA-3 or Ketchak, uh, the hash function designed by uh, Belgian, Belgian team in, uh, led by Jon Diamond in about 10 years ago. So SHA-3 is, built to, uh, is used to build a Patricia tree, to construct addresses out of the public key, and so on and so forth. So it's not like the best, like in terms of opt-in, not the fastest hash function in the world, uh, but it still can handle up to like 500 uh, megabytes, per, megabytes per second. Well, uh, to understand why we need a different hash function, I'll go a bit to the introduction how hash functions are used in uh, SNARKs. So this is some sort of a repetition, uh, a bit of the previous uh, Stark talk. Well, in Bitcoin, uh, we uh, sign because uh, usually I start, have to start with Bitcoin, unfortunately, because uh, uh, the, hash, the zero knowledge proofs apply usually to uh, transaction output uh, UTXO based uh, systems. So we sign a transaction with some output, and the hash function of transaction is included in the block. And after some point, we spend uh, the output by, by uh, signing the transaction and the output. Uh, with uh, uh, the private key that was uh, in the hash. And the crucial point here is that uh, the hash of the transaction is referred in clear text. When you uh, want to introduce a zero-knowledge payment system, uh, this is concealed, the hash of, is concealed to break up the link between the original transaction to send and the transaction to spend. So when the transaction is sent, it's not only included in the block, but also added to a specially crafted Merkle tree T. And when you want to spend it, you prove that there is, you know, a transaction uh, H, which is uh, in the Merkle tree T, that it has special structure, and you know the private key that is uh, uh, co that corresponds to the public key that is is in this transaction. And here, the transaction H is referred to in zero knowledge. And the most computationally expensive part in all protocols is to prove that the hash is part of the Merkle tree. So all the others uh, parts of the proof are rather fast. They all, even, uh, even with previous uh, the original Zcash, they can be managed within uh, one second. But when you have like 29 or 32 layers in the Merkle tree, this becomes difficult to, uh, to prove because uh, the uh, performance of uh, zero knowledge proven protocols, they scale linearly or even super linearly with the, the number of invocations of a hash function. And it turns out, turned out very quickly that traditional hash function, like regular hash function, are not quite suited for snarks or starks or bulletproofs because their circuits, they are optimized for uh, Intel or AMD processors for modern architecture, but uh, they are uh, not optimized for, uh, for the environment where Starks or Snarks operate. In these environments are big fields. 
So the fields are either prime fields, meaning that uh, all, now, all kind of our state is a vector of uh, integers model some prime number, and this prime number is uh, 256 bits or 384 bits, depends how afraid you are of recent uh, discrete logarithm complexity estimates. Uh, this for snarks and bulletproofs. And for Starks, uh, they are most uh, uh, helpful uh, field, uh, most uh, uh, better, best field to operate with. As an stent is a binary field, but not that big. So it's like uh, to the 32, to the 64. Uh, that's like the easiest to construct uh, Reed Solomon uh, proofs. So we can say we can simplify and say that in Snarks. Uh, a trusted party just uh, kind of applies a secret input uh, to the circuit, and we can say that like all intermediate states are hashed, it's not exactly true, but still, and all of them are published as a proven key. And in bulletproof Starks, uh, this uh, secret input is not needed, so the proven key is just the circuit itself. And for each proof, the, uh, to, kind of, to present a proof, to create a proof, you have to kind of match your execution uh, your computation with a proven key, so with a circuit or with the circuit on secret input. So you have to like combine the two traces. And that's why the bigger the circuit is, the longer it takes to construct a proof. And uh, it depends on the circuit size. It also depends on like if it's an algebraic trace like in Snarks, like in Snarks, then it depends on the width of the, or the size uh, of the state you operate with, on the degree if you permit arbitrary degree. So different uh, parameters are invoked and the formulas might not be uh, very simple, but there, there's still some metric to, uh, to optimize. And we know this metrics approximately for snarks. We know such metrics for bulletproof, so no such metrics for uh, starks. So the question is, the question that should have been uh, put uh, when snarks and starks were designed. So kind of we cryptographic community bit missed uh, this uh, question, uh, this requirement that we, uh, there is a need in hash functions that operate in big prime fields or big binary fields that are best in certain metrics, like circuit size or degree size product, like in Starks, and that they are, of course, secure, because the, the first two are easy to construct. It's difficult to create a secure one, and um, fortunately, our cryptographic and cryptanalytic experience allows us to create really fast hash functions, because we know certain constructions that are reasonably, that are certainly fast, and that uh, we have, uh, analyze them with cryptanalysis for years, for decades, and we know like the methods that could work, the methods that usually do not work, and we can quickly make a hash function that is secure and that uh, satisfies these uh, requirements. So one of the first approach was MIMC about three years ago, and the, the idea of MIMC was pretty simple. So in the core of the MIMC, there is a permutation. Uh, so originally it appeared as a cipher, but uh, if you want hash function, the, the key can be a random number. Uh, it's okay here. So uh, the idea is very simple. So you uh, have, uh, you add some constant, uh, then you, uh, and you operate in a big field, uh, by default some uh, prime field, and then you raise uh, your result to the power of three in this field. So you square and then multiply again. Uh, then you add the constant. Then you, you then you uh, put uh, to the power raised to the power of three. Then add constant to the power of three and so on. And each time the degree. So if you express actually, uh, it's easy to show that typical uh, cryptanalytic attacks like differential linear cryptanalysis don't work here uh, because of algebraic structure because the state is very wide. But algebraic attacks work. And the thing is we have to. Uh, make our, the degree of the polynomial that uh, corresponds to this, to the output of the function, we have to make that the polynomial is of high degree to prevent various sorts of attacks. And the degree increases, like the degree multiplies by three each time, and the maximum uh, possible uh, degree is uh, uh, actually two to the n, when n is the width of the state, and we have to uh, execute like uh, a bit less than n steps uh, to achieve maximum degree. Well, actually, actually a bit more, but this is like the order so that you understand. Like, if you if you if your permutation is I don't know 250 bits wide, then you need 
kind of uh, at least 100 something steps to achieve maximum degree. Okay, so there were also uh, Pedersen hash uh, proposals, but we can directly go uh, to our contributions because the others are not uh, exact. So they are in different paradigm constructed and kind of not so interesting for us. So our contributions consist of two parts. So the first part is uh, more generic. So it's about, it's about Merkle trees. And it turns out that we can do, uh, we can handle Merkle trees substantially better than before. Recall, well, this is like three layer Merkle trees, Merkle tree that uh, handles eight uh, messages. Well, suppose for simplicity that the hash function, it takes like uh, two, uh, we consider a compression function that compresses with the ratio two to one, and every message is of the size of the hash function output. And then in this case, you need n layers to hash uh, to the end messages. Okay, uh, and the thing is, the very nice thing is you can do better uh, because you can, uh, when you have uh, four, when you have two layers, you can process more than four messages. You can take fifth one and inject carefully a VXOR in uh, several uh, hash function outputs in three. And uh, well, you have to, and uh, Using that, you can, uh, for every like uh, two layers, you can uh, process not four messages, but five messages, and that's give you, well, not so big, but something like 20%, 15, 20% increase uh, in performance it should give. And this works for every uh, hash function. And collision resi premish resistance a bit decreases, but uh, collision resistance remains at the same point. So generalized bird effect also doesn't seem to work. And uh, this construction works for any hash function. Even more efficiently, if we have a hash function that takes, that can consume our bit very large input. Well, with regular hash functions, we already have that. Like we can, we can feed a uh, very big input to SHA-3, but it will be, uh, yes, uh, a sort of a sequential invocation. And here, suppose that our hash function is tailored to very, uh, uh, large input size. So the, in, uh, the output size is small, but what if the input size is big and we use this uh, large width to achieve uh, cryptographic security? The thing is, we can then decrease the number of, of layers, of course, so if, for example, you process the ratio is four to one, that you need uh, twice uh, fewer layers. And uh, what do we need, uh, how can we do that? So what's uh, the most optimal uh, way of operation? And it turns out that if we want to process some very wide input with a hash function, then uh, a very uh, secure and uh, construction is the framework. It's a called sponge mode of operation, and it's based on permutations. Very wide permutation means permutation, I mean that uh, it's transformation, easily invertible transformation that applies to very wide block. Uh, here, the, the uh, permutation is of width like uh, 768 blo bits or more, 1,000 bits, 2,000 bits, 4,000 bits. We know how such permutations can be constructed. And um, the idea, the, how they operate is very simple. So message is XORed not to, onto the entire state, but uh, all the state but uh, some so-called capacity bits. Capacity is twice the security level here. If you, security level is 128 bit, then capacity should be 256. And the message is XORed, XORed, XORed. Then you call a permutation XORed, you call it permutation XORed, you call it permutation. Then the message is uh, consumed. And then you output uh, this with the same rate as you consumed messages. And of course, permutation should be like ideal permutation in the sense that uh, it should be to some extent indistinguishable from a random permutation. Well, it's a constant function, but uh, you should uh, more or less understand what this means. Okay, so the question is how to construct a permutation so that it will be star snark or stark friendly. Um, okay, and the goal is to uh, come up uh, with, uh, with the design that will be both Stark and Snark friendly to some extent. Because the difference we know that uh, in Snarks, we optimize, um, we work in the prime field, in Stark, we optimize on, uh, uh, we work in binary fields. But apart from that, our uh, permutation can be built very similarly. The first attempt, uh, what if we modify MIMC and replace 
the uh, power of three with an inversion. And this is, of course, a very tempting step. And uh, it's, not, uh, it's not actually uh, trivial. So when the MMC was, in, was invented, uh, the authors tried this uh, approach, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Why? Uh, because uh, it's actually a very interesting exercise uh, that you can demonstrate that uh, if uh, uh, that uh, no matter how many rounds you have, if you're doing just the constant addition between the uh, inversions, that uh, the resultant function will be a rational function of the input of degree one. Uh, the thing is, you can uh, interpret your state as a fraction of like a two linear, one linear over another, ax plus b over cx plus d. And of course, when you invert, then the nominator and denominator just swaps. And when you add a constant, uh, the nominator changes, but the degree doesn't change. And unfortunately, the state uh, will be a rational function of degree one, and collisions are easy because they're like uh, simple linear equations or even quadratic ones, but they can be solved. Easily. So, uh, in the recent design, Jarvis, uh, they uh, decided to put some ar additional uh, linear transformations after uh, the inversion. But it's yet not unclear for me if this is secure enough, but I uh, haven't managed to break it yet. Um, the solution that is still obvious to me, because I would like to work with uh, wide permutation, uh, because I would like to um, leverage the permutation width to uh, or get um, a more efficient uh, circuit for a tree, not for one hash function, for, for a tree, uh, because that's the bottleneck. And the idea is that uh, why wouldn't we use multiple S boxes and use a very wide permutation? Then our function would be very similar to what we already have, uh, for example, in AES or other designs. And, uh, well, let's call it, for example, inversion hash. And uh, in this inversion hash, it operates as follows. So uh, it's, um, you see, like there are rounds. And in these rounds, we alternate nonlinear transformations, which are denoted by S. So each S is an inversion in some field. It's not actually important for the design which field it is. Uh, because uh, many attacks, they apply uh, similarly. So, of course, you substitute as a parameter the field size, and in some cases, the binary, uh, for binary field, some attacks work just a bit differently, but not tremendously differently. So, generally, if your function is, if this construction is secure for binary field, it will be, like, almost secure with uh, uh, the uh, prime field, unless your primes or binary field is very small. But the construction is like this. So each S is an inversion in the field, and each A is a affine, is an affine transformation in this field. That's basically a linear combination of inputs, invertible one. Uh, it's, uh, and the, another very nice idea is that uh, for the middle of this construction, we do not need a uh, full S box layer because the degree, so uh, the algebraic functions, the algebraic attacks we work with, uh, they, uh, they can be kind of mitigated, they can be controlled, even when the, with one S box in the middle or two. But with one is, is fine. And uh, the parameters of this uh, design are, of course, the width of an S box. And I say that this S box can be a prime field inversion for snarks, or this can be binary field inversion for snarks. And each bi you can take whatever binary field you want. So if you realize that, uh, if you think now that two, 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 two binary field is good for Stark, you can use it. If later you realize that for like Reed Solomon performance, you need 128 bit, you can choose a bit different function if they will work fine. And the analysis, uh, analysis remains valid to most extent. So of course we conducted like, uh, mainly my colleagues conducted a number of different sorts of attacks on this design because we already know this design from like 20 years old, just the S, S boxes were smaller. And uh, apparently algebraic attacks become uh, the most effective here. But uh, when you uh, restrict ourselves, for example, to 128 bit security, you don't need many rounds here. So we are talking about like six to eight rounds for outer rounds with full S boxes, full root box layers, and I know five, 10, 15 middle rounds. So the total number of S boxes is not terribly big, 
but it's interesting to optimize it. It's interesting to try to expand our permutation to see how big it should be to uh, give us the best uh, circuits for trees. And for Stark setting, what we have. So uh, in our inversion hash, uh, uh, here in the left column, there's width. And uh, we can calculate uh, the formula, uh, pretty much the same formula that Eli Ben Sasson has used, uh, has used for uh, uh, approximating Stark uh, prover performance. And uh, the resultant performance, uh, predictable performance, is uh, on the rightmost column. And it's logarithm of uh, time uh, formula. So this should be read that uh, if you use SHA-256, uh, for a tree of 2 to 32 elements, then, and you need 128-bit collision resistance, then uh, your, that proven time should be about 2 to the 33 of something. Uh, if you use Pedersen hash, then it should be like 2 to the 22. So you see like almost a thousand times faster, but of course, uh, unfortunately, in the real in the real world, the the performance increase from SHA-256 is not that big because SHA-256 circuit is very sparse. Um, but still, uh, if we use our inversion hash, we can if we use like default width of 1,000 bits, we can still be like four times uh, faster. Should be four times faster than Pedersen hash. Um, if we uh, if we use, uh, and interestingly, if we increase the width, then uh, we can do better. And for uh, uh, 1,500 bits and 2,000 uh, bits, we can get uh, be best results. So 1,536 is uh, the best we can get. It's like 60% uh, faster than uh, the smaller one. So our current proposal is to use uh, uh, this uh, with the uh, how many, like, uh, not, not very big number of rounds, like eight uh, outer rounds and not that big number of internal rounds. And the, the tree will be twice uh, smaller. For SNARKs, uh, we can estimate the number of constraints, which is also interesting. So suppose that we use 255-bit S-boxes. If you want to use SNARKs on uh, elliptic curves with 255-bit uh, primes, if you want 384-bit uh, uh, primes, then you should kind of yeah, substitute them and uh, it will be uh, somewhat similar. And we can calculate the number of constraints and uh, we can compare with Pedersen hash, which is like uh, 40,000 constraints for the entire trees, and if I uh, counted correctly. And for this uh, sort of hash for the entire tree, if we use... Uh, if we use six S boxes in parallel, and uh, you, uh, for 127-bit collision resistance, then uh, we should uh, have only 666 uh, constraints. Well, maybe indeed for a fair comparison, we should use a bigger prime, but I think the, or the order of order will be uh, the same. So I think this is uh, quite promising. And uh, well, of course, we advocate some. Uh, additions to AVM or whatever will be used to uh, support, natively support the operations in the field, uh, basically for verifiers, because verifiers in Starks and Bulletproofs, they need some parts of the circuit. And uh, uh, some, some field operations should be supported. And optional, I don't know if the inter entire permutation should be as a precompiled contract, maybe it's not necessary, but uh, we will see it all depending on uh, whether some uh, checks uh, against the entire permutation are uh, performed, should be performed in a contract, and if so, then indeed a precompile contract would help. So uh, this is just the beginning. The just beginning, that's kind of uh, the hash function that we cryptographers can design within a short uh, time period, but I think they can be designed better, better ones can be found. So we can uh, try other uh, Stark friendly fields, we can uh, work better with uh, algebraic attacks. For example, the Grobner basis attacks are uh, sort of kind of underexplored, and uh, because uh, uh, and uh, as far as they claim to be the best in in the setting, it would be very interesting to apply uh, existing uh, Grobner basis labor libraries to uh, attacks and see if they indeed kind of perform as we expect. 
And it would be also uh, cool to have some, to fix some metrics and uh, have some kind of competition uh, that like everyone can suggest a hash function that optimizes the number of constraints somewhere and withstands uh, security attacks up to, I know, to, to the 128. Uh, maybe design some Merkle tree oriented hashing. Uh, they already exist tree based hashing, but uh, maybe there can be something more optimal. And uh, also, for example, maybe 128-bit security is not needed that much. Maybe if uh, the hash function, if the uh, proof uh, should uh, be like secure for only a short period of time, uh, then maybe a lower security level uh, would be nice. For example, 64-bit security level, I don't know, maybe 56-bit security level. Stuff like this, then we, have, we can have uh, much, again, more compact uh, designs and maybe with faster proofs and, and uh, faster verifications. Uh, thank you very much. We have time for maybe one question. So I'm sure you've heard about the uh, new designs uh, coming out for the Starks with uh, Jarvis and Friday, although they're confined uh, to the binary field. Uh, how would you describe the relationship between your work and that? Hmm? How what? How would you describe the relationship between your work and that? How do you see them? I've just seen them two days ago, and basically their idea is in the uh, MIMC with only one register to insert a fine layer. And uh, that's not yet clear for me if this indeed withstands algebraic uh, attacks because I, I have some doubts, but I haven't found an actual attack, so maybe, maybe it's indeed secure, but uh, I would be uh, very careful. I think that, that party reviews are needed. Another round of applause, please. <laughs>